Hey, Sid. Sid, are you there? Oh, you're connecting to audio. Hello, hello. Hey, how you doing, man? Good, how are you? I'm doing all right, I must admit. How are things with uh, Connecticut? New Hampshire? Yeah, there too. <laughs> uh, good, it's really <laughs> hot again. We've got gross hotness going on and uh, I, just, I just got in and we were at that new photo place location all day, painting walls and stuff like that so ah, manual labor yeah well sometimes manual labor working with your hands just nothing like it mm -hmm. and it's for a good cause and it's it's already the, the color of the walls already look a bazillion times better than uh, what they did so that's good and then i'm a little distracted uh, the guy that runs the place he came by the studio last wednesday and he brought a couple of cameras and he brought some plates and he brought some negatives and we shot some images that we're going to try to use for marketing um and it was interesting because he brought some of the his plates with him and i think they were iso 2 um and i had an alien b set up at full power and we were doing like seven seven pulses of the flash for what we thought was going to be the proper exposure and then he developed them and there was no information because the light just wasn't bright enough so oh my have, yeah so we have to figure out so i've got i just dug out i've got a box full of old lowell hot lights which are ridiculously bright and hot yeah um, yeah i've got two low total low total yeah lights. yep they are halogen is really hot yep the ones that smoke and but um, but i, I <sighs> You know, you, it's going to be six one half dozen the other. If you can do a portrait, man, that'd be a long, be a long, 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 long time to, to sit there. Yeah. So we have to. We're going to do some testing. We're going to try the hot lights. We're going to try. He's got my. Um, I had an old Norman pack with three heads that he took to the new space, but we haven't had a chance to hook anything up yet. Um, so once the space is slightly livable, we're going to start going in there and doing a bunch of tests to figure out. Um, you might look what lens are you using you're using eight by ten obviously right um or four yeah, by five yeah i had a we the film shots we took with my toyo um and then we took the the plates i think he had a five by seven or he had a half plate um what's the what's the lens i i don't know is it a modern lens like a nikor or a i think Schneider or something i th i think i didn't i didn't look at just what he was you gotta, with. you got to get on eBay because you got to remember back in the plate days, mm -hmm. they didn't use apertures. Right, right. They just right. had a piece of glass. You need to yep. find a fast F4 or yep. something, just fucking honk of glass and go yep. with time. Yeah, we were shooting, I think, I want to say we were like five, six, and then we were doing, well, we were popping it seven times. So I think our exposures were at least seven seconds um so but he's 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 only he's only done natural light landscape so he's never done off-camera lighting so it'll just be it's just going to be a matter of just sitting down and just doing a bunch of testing and everything and stuff um but still yeah. cool so he sent me the he scanned the negs in last night he just sent them over to me um when i left the space so we've got like five images and they're all of like view cameras and close-up detail shots and stuff. So I'm just going to start mucking around with those and try to make some little posters out of them just to, so we can get now, some stuff up and start announcing the, the business. I was going to say when you're popping the strobes, which how powerful are your strobes? Uh, I've got an alien B 1600 and I was at full power. That's and 800 we were, watt seconds. Yeah. So we were pretty, and the light was pretty close. Dude, to I the, bet you're going to be closer to 24. To yeah. Yeah. Pops. Well, I mean, I, I know like those dudes that shoot wet plates, they've got those crazy speedatrons that like they're just i mean you know the building the power in the building goes down when they set those things off so yeah, well they're um they're three times 
more powerful than the, the speed of Tron black lines are 2400. Yep. So they're three times faster than yours. Yep. Or brighter than yours. So, yep. yeah, I was going to say, I remember shooting um, uh, Norman 800s. Mm -hmm. I had two Norman 800s and six Norman 2000s. Mm -hmm. And on one shoot, we had the, the 2000s were all out in the field and we had to use the 800s. Oh, God. <laughs> product. And I can still remember sitting there in the dark and my, going, you know, you hear the pop. pop. Yeah. My yeah. assistant going, 32. Yep. Pop. 33. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's, oh, it's yeah. crazy so yeah. yeah so it'll be some exp and you, like we know i know in particular there's a guy that is about 50 minutes from me who does it's actually the guy that used to teach me at the college i went to he sort of per perfected his wet plate look um and i know he's he's blasting intense amounts of studio light so um he knows the guy that owns this place well so we might just call him down for an afternoon and just be like okay give us a ballpark of either what we can do or what we have or he can start saving up for like a studio rig that eventually when, you know, business starts rolling in, he can invest in so that it can just be, um, that's fun. It's, it'll be fun. I'm just, I'm looking at these shots that he just emailed over and I'm just, I'm so excited about, it's going to be exciting. We, we had a meeting last night and we were just trying to go over the name of what the retail shop is going to be. First, he wanted to call it, um, uh, analog, uh, uh shit, what was he going to call it? Um, analog underground. Um, but I think the consensus, everybody, somebody came up with the name Retro Photo uh, and everybody kind of went, oh, it's kind of commercially and markety and, and we can make good logos okay. out of that. Stuff. I'm going to play so. devil's advocate since marketing is my, was my gig for 20 plus years. Mm -hmm. you're, you're telling it what it is as something retro. And what I'm thinking is why don't you consider positing forward rather than looking back? Just an idea. Yeah, I know he's. So it's the business is split into two things. So the the rear half of the business is is the production line for his what he calls the speed plates, which are the the glass plates um, that he's coating. So he's I think he wants to specifically target just film people, um, and he doesn't want anything that would make people think he sold digital stuff yet i don't know if you know eventually he's going to get to that point um but right now it's it's primarily the store is going to basically just sort of sell the stuff that he's making um uh, as well as other film related gadgets and things um so i don't know and it's still early enough that you know we can still we can still bounce ideas off of everything and stuff yeah so we're yeah. getting a feel for it yeah good yeah yeah Sounds really exciting said it's it's you know it's the, the last time we had something in the air, so we had a, a mom and pop camera store that had been in our city for about 75 years, and it was three generations. And I used to go in a couple of days a week, the, the guy that owned it, he never, the, well, the grandfather, but he never, like when things didn't sell, he never returned anything, he would just throw stuff in the basement. And so over those 60 years or so, eventually they moved into a loca new location and he had a basement full of stuff. And so he was like, well, why don't you come in? We'll, we'll build a little separate room. Just come in a couple of days a week in the afternoons and just list some of this junk on eBay for us. Um, so it was nice because not only did I get to do that, but I got to hang out up front at the register and I would get to network with a lot of the local shooters in it. It was the place where all the local photographers used to go to either to buy film or just to, to network or touch base or just communicate. And they closed about 11 years ago and there hasn't been anything like that around and there's been no sense of community or tribe. Um, and so this is really exciting because, you know, he's like, he's got these two little spaces that he wants to be dark rooms and there's going to be three enlargers in each dark room. So you could have a maximum of six people renting time at one time, but he also has a little area where he wants to sell film and he wants to, he wants to get that community back so that he's just like, you know, even if they just come in, buy a roll of film, and just hang out for a couple of hours because they know other people are going to come in and they can just communicate. Um, I think that's, that's just so important to have. And it's just not here anymore. And it's really, it's really upsetting. So. Yeah. Um, I'm talking to my, my friend here in town. Uh, he used to own a dark room and we've been having some discussions. Phoenix is a big city. We're going to look into seeing maybe a, you know, a little 1200 foot square foot space with some, some, um, uh, you know, black and white enlargers, black and yep. white classes and stuff like that. But, um, but for the friends, some scanners, 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, which is pretty interesting. How yeah. are, you guys, are you guys scanning them by shooting the, the plates? Is that what you're doing? He he's got um I, I don't know, he, he just he's got something that he sent over to me. Uh I mean he scanned the negs. I think he's scanning the plates. He's got a flatbed of some kind. He I don't I don't know what it was. Um, but he's he does have a way to scan the stuff in. I was on um, a meeting the other day with some really high powered shooters who do a lot of black and white work. Mm -hmm. And they were all of them. All of them, six of them, were going. Uh, put the scanner away. I just shoot the negative now. Oh, really? Like D eight hundred or D eight ten. You're going to get a forty five, fifty. You know, if you're using one of the new Canon sixty four megabyte file, <laughs> right? That's raw. Yeah. When you scan, you get a TIFF back. Yep. There's not much you can do with a TIFF, but when you get a raw file back, holy crap! Yeah. So, and they're saying, they're, they, they pointed me to a link. I didn't click on the link, so I totally don't know where it is. But there's somebody online that, that has done a, uh, an example of a drum scan. Yep. Uh, two and a quarter, two and a quarter. And a, a, um, uh, a flatbed scan. Yep. And a photo from a, uh, like a DSLR, right? The mm -hmm. DSLR works favorably with the drum scan it's the flatbed scanner good flatbed scanner too you know really good yep. epson scanner um was actually last oh wow so huh. yeah my friend eric that's what he does he does so all does he just drop the negs on a like on a light table and then he just aims yeah, the camera straight he, down yeah there's a guy working on um in salt lake city working on a set of templates is going to have these little you know, plastic things that you can get, yep. you can put them on a light table, take a reading off the light table with your meter, uh, and you showed them and they showed them and they, they oh. hold the negs flat so you can get a good shot of them. Well, you remember the old um, slide duplicators? Yep. You put on the front of, the, of your, was it yep. 105, I think 100, 100 millimeter lens or something, you put on the front. Yep. There you go. I mean, yep. they're $40 yep. at Amazon. <laughs> yeah. For that's for 35s, but. Yeah, it's, it's a, you know, there's a big interest in film. And I think the, the the sooner that people come up with ways to take the friction off of it, mm -hmm. that's when it'll start to flourish even more. Yep. We got Lee and Terry. Hey, Terry, how are you? Hey, Lee, how are you doing? I'm excellent. Thank you. Yes. Lee, um, Lee is, my element. Lee is out, Lee. <laughs> He's out delivering papers. <laughs> it's just dropping on the paper window. out the window. So, yeah. the... <laughs> <laughs> and then doing very well. Thanks. Good. Finally oh. going home. Going home. Well, I had so. the topic today of uh, black and white uh, conversions and monochrome. Uh, but mm -hmm. I don't think Lee's going to be able to share anything since she's in the car. Mm. Um, oh, yeah. But you can share it. You had a black and white derby stuff. I do. That's right. I do. Yes, you do. And it's your choice. Even better. <laughs> even better. I don't even have a say on this one. You have full control. Uh, let me get him up here. How about you, uh, Sid? You got any favorite black and whites you want to share? Uh, I am still digging them out. I just, I, I'm, I've got the scans of the things that we just shot the other day with those cameras. But let me, uh, let me dig up. I just got in, so I haven't had a chance to find my shot. But uh, yeah, let me see what I can find. Terry. McDermott, do you have uh, black and white you want to share? I didn't know we were sharing, and I'm getting ready to head into town for my appointment. <laughs> All right, that's fine. I don't have any. I don't have anything ready, but I did have a question. Sure. You were maybe gonna, you were maybe going to talk about uh, signing photographs, and I sold a print to a fellow, and he wants me to sign the front of it because to him that makes it perfect. So is that okay? <laughs> it, it's is, is what okay? Say it again. He wants, uh, this fellow bought a print from me and he wants me to sign the front of it down in the corner. Yeah. 
So I figured that'd be okay, but I didn't know what the official thing was to do. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's perfect. There's no, I don't think there's any really no, there is rule. Yeah, it's you, whatever. Is there a margin on your print? Um, no, it's a, a metallic print on the Kodak nope. metallic paper. So it's all the way to the edge. So I'm just going to sign it in the bottom corner where it's um, where it's not in the main subject. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, yeah. Um, in Should fine art world, first. Um, yeah, that's a good idea. Who said that? What was the idea? Test, test the, the ink first. Yeah, I'm going to get a, if I can find one, a silver Sharpie, because it's kind of a, a dark pavement. And then the, the picture is of a, a silver, like a 34 Ford grill and the headlights and stuff looking down on it. Yeah, that'll so look great. Yeah, a little bit of dark pavement in the corner. So I thought I, if I could find a silver Sharpie, that would work perfect. I don't do this with my five by sevens, but with anything larger, like my eight by tens are usually six by nine on the eight by 10 paper, mm -hmm. higher up. So there's a larger border at the bottom and I sign it there yep. oh, okay. on the border. The five by sevens are too small. I don't do that. Yeah. I just, I go right and I sign them. Generally, on my five by seven, I've been signing them on the back, and I use a number two pencil for oh, my pencil. yeah. Big, well, on my on my prints because they're archival. If I use an ink, it can you know, yeah. twenty years down the road, that ink can be coming through the front. So yeah, yeah, yeah this this is an eleven by seventeen, and um, Kodak makes a metallic paper that's incredibly metallic-y. It's really beautiful. So. Um, He's going to have it mounted so it shows from edge to edge. So it'll be fun to see. That's great. Okay, that was my question. I was yeah, there's curious. no, there's it's whatever you whatever you like to do or whatever the buyer requests really. Yeah. Um, when I when I do mine, when I mat my images, I always leave um, you know maybe a quarter of an inch around, and then I'll just go in at the bottom and I sign it. And then if it's like a numbered edition, I'll just throw a number on the other end or the date or something like that. But. Okay, cool. um, but yeah, whatever you would, it's, it's people argue about that all the time. It's whatever you, whatever you like to do, whatever you're cool oh, okay. with. Yeah. yeah. Whatever the, whatever the uh, art, the purchaser wants to. Well, yeah. You. Yeah. And usually if it's, if it's a fiber-based print, um, use pencil. And then if it's, you know, more of a glossy, just test out a bunch of like archival type pens or, or like fine point things, mm -hmm. um, just to see what it does to the paper over time. I had, I used to have, uh, these large 20 by 30 inch prints that I had done of toys and some people bought them and they wanted me to sign it with a Sharpie and I signed it on the front. Um, and I think within like five years, I think of, of, of it hanging in the guy's living room, the Sharpie just completely faded until you couldn't even see a signature anymore. So I was just like, Oh, <laughs> there's a learning for you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I have um, a copy that got a crinkle in it. And so I'm going to, I'll practice on that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so those silver sharpies are really nice though like when i go to concerts and stuff i have them sign the album covers with that it just looks really nice yeah especially because the print's gray and the headlights and stuff so it's very pretty silvery so yeah. cool thank you i wish yeah. i'd known it was black day black and white day i have some nice black and whites i would have shared <laughs> another time mm -hmm. lee Anytime. lee your, pic your yeah. picture your pictures are on my laptop so oh, I, can't, I can't share them I took that's why because I took them oh. with me on my trip. Gotcha, Sorry, gotcha. I'm sitting Actually, here Actually, you know what? <laughs> I think we can share. I we can share uh, a page on my website. Let me see. Maybe I can share. There's okay. Oh, I can get your website. I, I can get it. I can get you it. You can here. get it. Is ligiaphotographer.com and go to personal project. And then open what are that says. Okay. I still need to add a few things who, to it, but who did your website? I did. Yeah, we gotta fix this real bad. I mean, <laughs> is your husband there? Yeah. Yes. If, if your husband's there, have him knock you upside the head once, all right? This, okay. This 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 is not gonna work. Okay. It, it, who's who's uh is this like a Wix or something like that, or did you do it yourself? No, it says Squarespace. Squarespace. All right. I will yeah. send you the the I'll send you the the um 
the template that I want you to use. Okay. Okay. And right. um, yeah, this is the wrong template for your work. And your pictures are oh. too too small. Let's see what happens when I click on them. Yeah, they okay. don't they didn't even get large. Okay, I'll send. We'll, we'll be able to fix it. When who did your logo? Dropbox money. What's that? Who did your logo? Uh, my husband actually. You guys are great. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna fix your logo too. Okay. 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 Yeah. Um, Sounds fantastic. Yeah. Um, let me just tell you, okay, this is, this is not beating up on anybody who designed it. It looks like it was designed a while ago. Oh, okay. This, this font is not you. I know you. I've known you now for a year and a half. This yes. isn't you. It's not your personality. It's not your, um, right. it's not your eye. So I will, right. I will help you with that as well. And uh, we'll get that all all done. But all right. So these are kids in okay. the uh, in the oh, water wow. park, right? It's, yes, in water park. Now, uh, if you see the image, this is something that is. Yeah, that ain't working. <laughs> Audio is not working. <laughs> Whoa. The emotional connection to the photograph, everybody knows. Well, there is a photograph of this. This is a shadow of a little girl who has a ponytail, and it's a silhouette. And I don't know if you can point to it. This this right there is like um, the second row right in the middle. This one? Or this one? Uh, let me see. I don't see the course. Lee, your audio is not working. Bad connection. Bad connection. Lee, we cannot we cannot hear you. You are uh, not working at all. But let me bring up uh, Lee's Derby pictures over here because we'll see if that if that helps. Here's her Derby pictures. We're, we're actually going to do a we're doing a book of her Derby pictures. This was at the Kentucky Derby. I think she said it was uh, 2007. Yeah, 2007. Oh, wow. Really great shots. Got, there are doubles in here, but there's a reason for that. But um, we're going to lay out a book for it, uh, of it. It's just, That's excellent. Yeah, it's really good work. Just, she's uh, quite a good photojournalist. Okay, photojournalism is her background. Oh. So... Actually, I, I'm back. Okay, we're just we're looking at your derby pictures here. Oh, wonderful! Thank you. I love my derby pictures. <laughs> so, um, I I I think I think it's going to end up being about a 36 image book. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I'm thinking about putting only one plate on a page. Yep. Because. Yes. Each image that, like this one right here, I don't know what to put that next to. That would right. that would keep that image, the integrity of that image. Anything else I'm going to put to, you know, the same the same with uh, 
Oh, there's someone. Is it? No, it's up a little bit. You know, um, this one with the two horses. Mm -hmm. That's a that's an image I want to see in its entirety, all by itself. Yep. So I'm thinking like so it'll be a 75 page book, uh, probably uh, eight by ten. Um, that's great. Blurb. Yeah. But I think it'll be really going to be nice. Really going to be yeah. nice. And then and then if I want to, I think um, so too. If I want to make a change in the layout, I can do that yeah. by presenting a spread. Yep. I can just go ahead and do it like, you know, we got a picture, blank, pa blank page or title, picture, title, picture, spread. Yep. You know? Uh, so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Throw oh, a couple of idea. double truck kind of things like every yep. once in a while just to, yep. to really pop. Yeah, Those are very great. good. Yeah. And we'll have some rhythm too. Yeah, I absolutely. Yep. yep. Yeah, just looking at the thumbnails, like I just like, God, there's so many that would make fantastic covers, and it's just like, how do you even, how do you decide which one is going to be? Not the... been easy. No, I've been, I've been working on this for two weeks, so I'm going. Yeah, look there's at such this. A great Look at graphic this. quality to those. <laughs> that shot with that dude looking down like that. Oh. Yeah. 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 That's so, great. Yeah, this one here with the steeple behind him. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's a good problem to have when everything is so good that you're like ah, i don't know well you know i could easily I, I i bet i could do 60 pages 60 pictures but mm -hmm. i don't think we should do 60 pictures i think nope. we should you know it's nope. going to be somewhere between lee it's going to be somewhere between 35 and 40 pictures i think that's a good number yeah. for your that's a good for your first book yeah it's a good portfolio Yeah, look at that. So it's so clear. So much. So much. So much good stuff. Isn't that great? Yeah, look at All that. Right. So we definitely got a definitely got a hot commodity here. Hmm. Oh, I'm pretty jazzed. Oh, I love it. The guys behind the gates. Check this out. <clears throat> Very cool. Yeah. That's Lee, awesome. I really do like your um, your. I don't know what what would I call it processing whatever your your the way you're presenting it, it's muted. Mm -hmm. Your whites aren't real white; they're down. Right. Everything's down. It, it. I I like that look. I've always liked that look. Look at that! Wow. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's, it's right. so yeah. It there's maybe, enough. So maybe fifty. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> right right <laughs> it's interesting because they're they're they've got contrast but at the same time they've got they've got more tonality yeah. they, and everything they so remind that's really me of the masters you know um when you're looking at edward weston's portraits yeah. ansel adams yeah. portraits yeah. their skin tones of caucasian yeah. people yep. are like zone five yep today when yes. you Yes. that they're zone six yeah you just almost crank universally the... and in yep. the fashion yes. world they're pushing seven yep right yes and yep. so you have that 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 craft to it and i really really like it a lot i think it's uh thank you so much yeah, great book all right very go good back to editorial. <laughs> go back to editorial <laughs> um and and actually no this day was fantastic it was a collection of many, many times going to, by the time that I got to this day, I already have practice. I don't know how many times going into the, the horse races because we have one, uh, what they call arena, horse races. It's, it's been uh, updated and remodeled now, uh, the paddock. And, uh, and I went over and practiced and practiced and practiced because I knew I was going to do the derby. So before I went to the derby, I already went practice panning, practicing people practice. And that day it was like shooting like crazy, fast, sharp. Uh, you need to be on your toes. And I, I mean, you just couldn't avoid it. It was like, and on, and on top of it, you get energized by the energy of the field, the crowd, the horses. Because I like horses, that's 
So the whole combination is like having the best of days because you have everything. The people are pretty because you know the hats and everybody, everybody's is peepy, everybody's happy. It's very exciting. And you got your camera, so even more exciting. So it was a combination of everything, fun stuff. So very exciting day. Yeah. Fun. yeah. Yeah, very cool. Did you say you had something, Terry? Terry McDermott, did you get, did you say you had a She's, shot? Yeah. No, I'm driving, so I can't. Ah, She's in her okay. Car. Um, hi, Virginia. Welcome. Hello. Hi. Do you have a shot to share? It'll take me a minute to get it together. No Sid, Here, I'll throw something? up. Yeah, let me throw up two from a recent. Uh... Yeah, hold on. Let me. Um, I got. I remember. I got to go and do this. All right, and I am not sharing. So go ahead. Okay. Let me hit that. And let me hit that. Boom! Boom! So these are two from just a recent headshot headshot session. I typically shoot on white. Um, but uh, we had a few minutes to kill and uh, I just wanted something really simple. So I just turned the background lights off um, and through just a quick test shot, I was just, I just liked, I just liked that his face was just illuminated and we had enough uh, black detail in the background where you could separate his jacket and sort of the outline of his shoulders and everything. Um, and I don't, I haven't been shooting on black backgrounds recently. And uh, so I've just been trying to spice it up a little bit. And then this was sort of an outtake. This wasn't, you know, part of anything that he wanted or anything, but I was just like, just, you know, look, look down and off to the side. And I just got a really simple kind of moment. Um, but I like it. It's funny. We were just talking about, you know, having all this tonality and stuff. And when I process my black and whites, I basically take a, I do two conversions and then I combine those and then I bring down the opacity of one. I do a blue layer and that makes the skin really dark. And it makes like, if they've got freckles, it makes the freckles pop out. Uh, and then I do a much lighter one and then I combine them and I just sort of deset, I take down the um, opacity of the really light layer until I've got this nice combination of the two where you can still see lots of detail in the skin um so you you process it two different ways in lightroom you process it yeah so i do i shoot everything in color and then uh -huh. um after i finish the color file i immediately just take that color file and i'll turn it in. i go into uh not uh, channels i go into channels and i just do a simple blue channel and that makes it really dark like especially skin right. like it just right. if you've got any kind of blemish it just like pops right out and I save that and then I reopen the, um, the color file and then I've got like a Greg Gorman um, uh, action that I run with that. And that makes almost the opposite. It makes the skin tones really, really bright and luminous. And then I'll drop the, the bright channel, uh, the bright file on top of the blue channel file. And then I just go in and I'll just move the opacity until I, I find that sort of recipe. And what it does is it, it just, it adds something to the skin tones, I think. If I leave it too dark, it obviously it looks too dark. But then if I use the just the light channel, um, it makes the skin look too too luminous. Mm -hmm. And so I'm trying to find that little that secret sauce where you get all the sort of the detail like on him. It's just all the things on his head. And I know I like that. Like some people, I, yeah, but I just think it adds a nice kind of um have you seen a granality silver print? I no, I have not. They look like Duratran. Yeah. You kind of go, <laughs> is there a light behind that? The really, really exceptional prints. Now, I, yeah. I'm sure he's a good printer. I don't know that he does his own prints. Mm -hmm. I believe, I believe they're, um, and this, we're talking silver prints. I believe they're yep. done by a, a, the lab in Hollywood. Um, oh, okay. so very, very good people there. Uh, yeah. But they're, they're stunning. There's nothing like a silver print. Yeah, I love my uh, digital prints. I yeah. really do. There's no doubt, but there's just nothing like, like a silver print. Yep. Yep. Like a nice fiber-based print. Yep. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So those are some recent kind of things. And it's now, yeah. I, one one more wonky question. Tech question. Yeah. Yep. When you do the 
the two are you moving them over in photoshop as smart objects or as... i you know i only process in photoshop i've i have lightroom i've opened lightroom a few times and it scared me to death i've had wedding well, shooters you're using but you're using camera raw in photoshop yes and i'm also yeah. i also i'm not a high volume shooter so you know like most clients are getting one to two files so i don't have any problems opening those up and you know spending an extra five minutes in them because i'm not shooting such high volume and i'm not processing such high volume too um so yeah i'm i'm just and i'm just an old dog like i have a hard time with new tricks so i've i got my little thing down and then anytime i try to branch off from that i'm just like can't do when that I'm i gotta in, go back when i'm in capture raw uh, i would i would tell you don't not do this go and check it out it's you you may go go yeah i checked it out don i'm gonna do it my way check it out yeah. if you export from camera raw as a uh, smart object right okay and then you export the lighter one as a smart object Yep. Then you can tweak it in Photoshop and you think, yeah, the dark one's just a little too dark. You can go back to the raw file. Yep. Because it's a smart object. Oh, right. Okay. And tweak it a little bit rather right. than having to totally remake it. Reopen the file, right? Because yep. raw, just you make the adjustments and then you open it up. Yep. Yep. Oh, camera. All right. I'm going to write that down. So smart object. This is a, this is a, an exceptionally beautiful portrait, my friend. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. I just, I like the tone, like the, you know, like I crank the contrast up just a little bit, um, but I like the tones, the tones feel good. Um, mm -hmm. And that's just one, that's just one light. So it's just got this beautiful light. I just love the way it falls on his jacket and you can see the texture in the coat, but there's still shadow detail, you know. You're like, not a you Project can... 52 person. So <laughs> my Project 52 people know what I'm going to say. When I look at a portrait like this and I see that separation of that jacket, from the background mm -hmm. that just gets me all goosebumpy yeah yeah in particular nice. right yeah. above his hand right along that that shoulder to camera right where you can see yeah. his shoulder and yeah. you can see the, the just, black background that's just that's what i want that's that's what yep. makes you know it's the first thing i look at is what separates the 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 yep. amateurs it's, and there's nothing wrong with being an amateur at all but what separates is that that lack shadow detail totally shadow detail shadow detail the presentation yep yeah. shadow uh, the, when i was in college man my my main professor that just you shat, you have to have shadow detail you've got to have yep. detail in every part of the image otherwise it just falls apart and it just yep. starts to look inky it looks like it, it there's there's like, again there's nothing wrong with being an amateur at all nope. no 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 everybody um, i'm everybody yeah. is but i'm still at an some amateur point when we say yeah well that's like how i feel I, i'm still an amateur you yeah. know i'm still going practice yeah. Uh, but at some point you have to say you've got to grow your craft your craft yeah. is everything and yeah. if it's just a snapshot then anybody can do it I, I keep saying that my project 52 people if you're take before you take the picture before you click the shutter ask yourself could anybody take this picture anybody right. The right. guy standing next to you, your mom, the, your, the guy across the street that just got a Rebel T3 for Christmas, could they take this picture? Because if the answer yep. is yes, don't take it. Don't right. bother. Right. Get down lower, right. get up higher, change lenses, do something else. Yep. Yep. Another good thing to do is like Photoshop has that grid thing where you can impose it over the image. And sometimes I'll go in and I drop a grid in and I'll go literally like every square and I'll just say, okay, what's in this, what's in this square? Is it important? Right. Is it not important? What can I look at? What could improve? How are the, for me, it's how are the shadow details? Is there stuff there? Is there something that needs to be removed? And what you're doing is you're, you're fine. You know, you, I mean, you're overpicking the image, but you're fine tuning it to the point where, you know, every inch of that frame is there for a reason. And, every inch of that frame either has something or doesn't have something to help bring the, the image together as a whole. Um, and it's, you just, you, you have to, and eventually what happens is you just do it long enough and it just becomes second nature. It's like riding a bike. You get to the point where it's just intuitive. And when that, like shooting, a lot of. When you're shooting, do you have a mental grid? I have a mental grid. Yes. I have six grids in my head, whether there's oh, yeah. a grid on my, my camera or not. I've got six pockets yeah my, i shoot i shoot slow and i do a lot of i move back and forth and i tell them i'm like i'm gonna sashay back and forth mm -hmm. here quite a bit so don't just hang out right there 
and I, I'm just, I'm playing with composition and what things look yeah. good. And it's interesting because it's, it's a matter of just, it's all organic and it's all just a matter of figuring it out as you're doing it. And like, you Absolutely. know, like the shot before this, I think I was pulled back a little bit more and it looked good, but it wasn't right. Something wasn't right. And then I just went a couple of inches closer to him and framed it up and it, there it was like, he was just looking the right way. I loved the crop. Um, I have a tendency to get a little bit tighter when I come in for crops anyways. Um, but it just worked. And yeah, it's just, but it's just, you keep, you have to, it's weird because people are just like, well, you can't think the image to death, but you have to do it to a point where you don't need to do it anymore. And your brain just knows. There's, there's two schools. There's the Dan Winters, mm. which is, this is a Dan Winters type approach. You are crafting that shot. Yep. You know, that great shot of Tom Hanks sitting there in the overcoat, yes. you know? Yes. Everybody's <laughs> trying to figure out how that he lit that. Yes. Well, it's really pretty simple. <laughs> He's got a, a, a grid spot and a big ambient light. See, it's yep. the, the key to, to Dan Winters is ambient light. He has yep. ambient with four by six soft boxes or scrims, and then he lights over the ambient. Yep. Um, but the, the thing about that shot is that shot wasn't designed for Tom Hanks to go, how about this, 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 you know, this and everything. Yep. That shot yep. was designed for Tom Hanks to do this. Yep. Yep. Don't fucking move. Because if yep. you move a little bit on that grid spot, it's going to change the picture. Yep. There's that school. And then there's the school of just, you know, boom, 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 boom. Neither one's right. Neither one's wrong. They both nope. deliver a different image. Yep. And it's, that's that's the thing is you just have to find your own yep. thing. Like it, in a day of the Internet, it's hard because everybody wants to shoot like everybody else and everybody, you know, like they start following these photographers and just, I, you know, I want to shoot like Annie Leibovitz. I want to shoot all this amazing stuff that sh she does and all the whatever. But you got to you can add little flavors of what other people do. But ultimately, you have to just you just have to find your own voice. Yeah. And that takes the longest because you're so busy thinking about other stuff. It, and it isn't until you look back. I mean, most of the time, you're not the one that recognizes your style. Clients will call me and say, you know, I, I was looking at headshot photographers in your area and I came on your website and I really liked your style. And you're just like, oh, my God, what, what is that? What did you just say? Like, what? And it's not until you're, you know, 10, 15 years in and you can look back and you're like, oh, OK, things are they're all they make sense. Like they all they're all separate shoots but there's something here that links them all together and it feels cohesive. Um, and every, you know, like everybody's always stressed out. Well, how do I find my style? How do I, find? it's like, you just shoot, 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 shoot. And then you just keep shooting. And eventually you find your thing. And that's, you know, like, that's how I got to where I am is I just, I like the way things look, but I also don't over overthink it. I don't know if that's the right word, but I don't, oh, I try not right to, you know, it's just like, I don't know. It's so, it's so hard to explain. Um, part of, you know, part of what's, and I've said this before, so it's going to sound like a broken record, but some of what we're missing is the context of the tool. You take a different picture. Now, Tom Hanks shot was done with four by five. Yep. You can, you're not, you're not going, yeah, move around a lot on a four by five. The camera <laughs> restricts that. Yep. Right. Yep. Um, and today, all of our young photographers start on boom, 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 boom. Every camera's got a built-in motor drive. Yep. Did you ever take the drive off your camera? There were shots where I'd take the drive off. So I had to advance the advance film. It. I wanted yep. that time. Yep. And today, it's like, it doesn't matter. Everything's on, you know, push the button, yeah. you get a shot. Yeah, don't, don't shoot and then try to find the image in post just and you have to retrain your finger you have to retrain your brain to just slow down and don't shoot as much wait you know it's like waiting for the decisive moment and that's mm -hmm. that's that's what it's all about it's just training your brain your brain to recognize what your eye is seeing and your creative the creative lobe in your brain and eventually you just you find your thing you know and that's that's why it's so amazing like you look at i can look at all, all everybody else's work and nobody else shoots like me. And that's incredible. That's incredible that this little thing in your brain sees so much differently than every single other person. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's, you know, like, that's the stuff you have to sort of like, if you're a commercial shooter, that's you, know, you try to market your stuff. It's just like, there's plenty of other shooters. Nobody is exactly like me. Nobody shoots exactly the same way I do. Nobody has my eyeballs and nobody has this creative lobe that's hanging around in my brain. Yeah. I don't know. The only way to do that <laughs> is to shoot more. Yeah, just shoot, just shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot and shoot the stuff you love. Shoot, shoot the stuff you love. Shoot it, just shoot it and share it. 
Like there is a reason why you're shooting that stuff because you just love it. I love, I love people coming into my studio. I love the stories that they bring. I love being able to, to, I had a guy that came in the other day, really, I don't know how he found me. It was some kind of a Google thing. He's from Massachusetts. Um, you could tell in his emails, he was really kind of uncomfortable. I was just like, well, you know, I've never really done this. And my, my job is basically saying you have to get a headshot. You've put it off for too long. And he came in um, and right away, I have some little toys that are set up and he collects the same thing. And all of a sudden, like he, ju he just instantly relaxed because he was just like, oh, I'm, I'm among one of my tribe when it comes to this kind of thing. Um, so just, you know, just shoot the stuff you love and surround yourself with the, you know, you're passionate. I think more, I think, I think the, the biggest thing for me is I'm going off on whatever here but um i think photographers and creatives are so worried about what's not in their head that they just need to be introspective and they need to be like you know like you are unique and you you're made up of every single thing in the world that you love and that could be thimbles or cats or flowers or people or toys find a way to incorporate all that stuff that you're passionate about into your work and what you do because the the more uniqueness and the more you open up a lot of times the stuff like the junk I've done with the puppets and everything, the stuff that I've written that like Petapixel has run, it's from a genuine, like putting yourself out there. And that's, that's hard because a lot of people, you know, photography is all about like, you know, shooting girls and having high megapixels and whatever. And it's just like, no, you know what it's about? It's about caring enough to share the stuff that you're really passionate about and willing to put it out there. People may not like it. That's cool. I don't, I don't know. I'm going off on a tangent now. No, you're you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. You Good know? reminder. But since I have Virginia. Since I haven't been shooting for a while, it's a good reminder because I just did a shoot. Uh, I went to Maui to, to, to photograph a massage therapist. It sucked real bad because I had forgotten me in that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. she's she's fine with it, and she's going to come to this island in September, and we're going to shoot a lot of stuff in studio um but yeah it just looks like cheesy i shot pictures of my friend at, and it's you know. it's it's hard it's hard when you collect a paycheck too because it's like i have a hard time with people that call and they start barking at me like what they want things to look like or if they start bringing up other images from other people and it's like you know you need to go back and look at my website again and if you're not reacting to my work and the way that i'm you know like go to that person that you found that image like they might yeah. be because and it's it's just it's to me that that's what it's about it's it's about people that like my work and they're coming to me because they don't they want to see themselves in the way that i make photography and that's what i'm known for that's what yeah. i'm known for except but like i said i haven't i put down my camera november 7th the day i found out my son died and i i i picked it up for a workshop um I did a personal project on surviving suicide, um, but uh, for a client, yeah, but this is someone I know and she's, she's kind of figuring herself out where she wants to go. I did design her logo and I'm real proud of that. Uh, I think I did a good job on that, uh, but then thankfully I'll get a chance to reshoot. Uh, it's hard with a client. So she's like overly happy. Her name is Joy, her business is joyful. And she's like super. So my 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 portraiture is usually raw and honest, but yeah. she's so like she's automatically she's got one of those faces like we're floating in the ocean and people we're in the ocean and people are coming up to her, talking to her because she's got this big smile on her face all the time that's inviting. Wow. So I have to figure out how am I going to photograph that face in my way that I wow. see emotionally now I'm seeing it, but it just comes off as kind of cheesy. Once yeah. I started shooting, I think, no, this is not what I want. I have to redo this. Yeah. Yeah. You'll find it. You'll get there. You want to share a picture, Virginia? Yeah, I'll show the logo. Uh, let's see where we're at. My computer desktop is a mess because we're doing a family project. I Sometimes I get so depressed when I'm on Facebook. Here's another young lady wanting to be my friend on Facebook and she she doesn't have any money for clothes. <laughs> it's, you know, it's like it's it's like, oh honey, that's all you have to wear. Oh I I just I I just can't bring myself to befriend her. I would just feel depressed all the time. <laughs> God. Well, what do you do? Butterfly. Oh that's yeah. fun. So yeah. I had to 
in Illustrator, I had to kind of take apart the, it took a while to get the right typeface she wanted. And she was sending me samples. And so I found this one and it has the swashes so I could play with the swashes mm -hmm. in Illustrator. So I had to, you know, shorten them. I took out some of the lettering on the L because sometimes the loopy fonts are too loopy for me. Yeah. Um, and so I may take it out. Anyway, so I, I redid the font. Her, her favorite thing is dragonflies and she wants it in the, uh, but she didn't like it. So I had the wings a little bit down. So there was like a little dragonfly head. She didn't like it. So huh. is, um, is there any, just to be nitpicky here, um, the kerning between the F and the U in full, I don't know if it, yeah. it seems like the word is spaced apart. There's like a mile and a half between. Yeah, the you're the right. And thank you for noticing it's, that. It's yeah. because the loop of the F comes over, but yeah, it, it comes over, it comes over, over too the far. U. Yeah. Well, no, and I think the U has to go back under it just, just a, a tiny bit. bit. Yeah. 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 It's like Joy F is separate from the UL. Yeah. yeah and, and, um, and there was a lot of rebuilding on the font. And I just missed that. Yeah. So, yeah. I want to thank my know, friend Dave Say, my friend, my designer friend Dave Say for teaching me what kerning is. And now this, it's terrible. It's like a blessing and a curse because that's all yeah. I can see now when I look I at know. stuff. It's like, oh my God. Oh, Dave, how could you do this to me? And so letting too. When I look at a page and I go, oh God, those lines are too close together. What were you thinking? Like, oh. Well, and especially turn, turn because the, the last half of the word drops down, but then that's what she liked about the, she wanted is it just to look like when you handwrite it, it and it's not the, straight. I like that, that it drops down immediately because uh, when I looked at it, because the dragonfly is pulling it back up. Yeah. yeah. So it is that joyful thing, you know? Yep. Very yep. cool. Nice. So yeah, so I'll have to fix that. But it's it's fun to um reacquaint myself with Illustrator again. Yeah. Uh, which gosh, I haven't looked at Illustrator in a couple of years. So <laughs> it's like, oh no. Can you imagine having your name Joy and then your business name is Joyful? Like that talk about like trying to live up to like well, a here's word. the thing is like, that oh my she, gosh <laughs> she she never called her name is joy christine i knew her as chrissy she never called herself joy because she felt like she couldn't live up to her name yeah so she's been through a lot of crap in her life and now she feels like you know what this is who i am i think by embracing jo her name maybe she'll stop choosing rotten men <laughs> oh uh -huh. And realize who she is and just be herself. Um, but she really is that person that just attracts people because of her outward joy, joyfulness. So yeah. she's a health coach. She wants to be expand. She's a massage therapist. And I had to encourage her, you got to raise your prices because I pay way more for you because you're the best massage therapist I have ever known. And she's um, got to increase her prices for health coaching too. She lives on Maui. People expect her to be expensive. Oh. If she's going to do health coach, um, you know, what, uh, like online health coaching, one-on-one. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. on one, and I told her, make a package that's like the ultimate package for like, I don't know, $10,000. And I'll take you on adventures on the island and get your health in gear. Yeah. Uh, because she's really good at what she does. She just needs to. Uh, so basically, in helping her create her branding identity and... Um, and her website, oh my goodness, people pay a lot of money for these website designers that are crappy. Yes, they so are. So bad. Her <laughs> website looks like a kindergarten, a daycare center website. Oh. That's because web website, building of websites attracts two people, graphic designers and techies. Yep. That's left brain people and right brain people. Yep. And when techies build websites, holy God. Yep. You know? And sometimes, and the other thing, when designers build websites, if they don't know the web, they build something that looks like a brochure. You know, they're, <laughs> they're worried about, you know, two pixels spacing here. And, you know, with today's web, you can't do that because everything has to fit mobile as well. So mm -hmm. you have to let go of some things. Well, I brought a couple to share real quick. Yeah. Um, I've got... This one, I just absolutely love oh. shooting white 
and shadow on black and white. I love it. And uh, I got this. Now, these are digital converted. And I'm using um, a preset that I built using two other presets out of that, I, that out of uh, Lightroom. Uh, and I also use um, uh, um, silver effects mm. and then tweak it in silver effects. And sometimes I do two silver effects over the top of each other and blend them together, you know, with some burning and dodging. I do uh, that this too. Is, this is Baker, Nevada. That little line over there, that's the road that goes up to a mountain that's over on the left that you can't see called um, Great Basin National Park. It's absolutely stunning. And why Baker is this sad little dilapidated town I will never understand in my entire brain. Makes no sense to me. This should be, well, it's, a, it's astronomers come here all the time. Because it's like the darkest spot in the United States is you know, mm. central northern Nevada. Because ain't nobody there. <laughs> same and same with Utah up in this area is nobody there, and so there's no light pollution at all. There should be hiking stores and all that, but nope. This was uh, this was something at one time, and it died. And I love the patina on here. Uh, this shot. Um, this is Dawn uh, you know, on oh, wow. a road right out of uh, leaving um, Nevada going into Idaho. I'm about 20 miles south of Idaho here. And you come up on this scene of rocks and it's desolate. There's no bushes or anything. It's like, mm -hmm. what the hell? You know? Uh, and I really liked it. Really liked the area. So uh, that's gorgeous. That was cloud shadows on the top of the, that mountain yeah. just oh that cloud on the top left it's just fuzzy enough that like oh i yeah. love it from from i wells, love cloud shadows yes yeah. from wells nevada up to past twin falls there was a cloud in the east that literally traversed my same thing i was never in the sun wow. and yet there was sun all around me all the time it's like, you know, I don't know. The cloud was like, nah, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna hang out with you. I'm just gonna while. hang with you, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like you're going places. Let's do that, man. I'm with you. Um, and but it would give me this type of thing, the clouds on the top of the, the you know, and the light and everything. And you know, what I like about the shot is you know, sometimes you, you may miss that, you know, but that's kind of cool little thing up there. I mentioned in the past, I am not a wilderness shooter. Mm -hmm. I like my landscapes to have something of man in them. You're very rarely going to see me do a landscape without a fence or, a, you know, something. And um, I shot this and I, I was smiling because, yeah, I got my man stuff right up there. Yeah, baby, right there. Um, but it's got this neat foreground, this very interesting middle ground and in a cool background. Yeah. And anytime I can get those three things, foreground, middle ground, background, it, it tends to make me look at it as a more successful photograph. Yep. And this one, right into the sun on a cloudy day, I was wow. fascinated by this ridge of trees up here. So as I, when I pulled the bike over, I found this little meadow area. Now, I will tell you, there's some Photoshop here to lift this up. This didn't happen in the exposure. It just couldn't. I mean, yeah. I'm blasted into the sun here. So I lifted this up, but it, when I did, it's like this magic, all these little magical flowers, you know? It was, it was really hard to shoot this because I couldn't really see what I was doing. I was shooting, <laughs> burning the eyeballs off, you know, put the sunglasses on, try to take the shot. Um, but I really liked it because the trees back there mimic the trees in, in the middle ground, which are kind of like, this is very rough. This is a little less rough. And those are very formal, you know, yeah. uh, and that's what attracted me to the picture. Someone at, uh, on Facebook said, how would you, what would you say about your photography in one word? And mine is allegorical. Mm. I, I, I try to oh, tell flat. stories. What's that? It was in the flat group. I saw that and thought, yeah, that's a really good word. Yeah. I, 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 tr I look for things that, 
make me think of something else you know mm -hmm. it's like telling a little story here and i've got my foreground here and i've got my middle ground and i've got my cool background so i've got everything and then that letting the sun just burn through like that i just yeah i'm okay with that bring it on baby <laughs> that's great are those all shots that you took while you were on your trip yep these are all done with the uh very cool uh, d750 very nice yeah yeah uh thank you i i did have a great i did have a great ride really really great ride even even sitting under the tree in the middle of the indian reservation middle of navajo land talking to you guys last friday was a, <laughs> was a real who i know more packed because i had to take everything off the bike to get to the laptop Mm -hmm. so I had everything now it doesn't take forever i can pack the bike in about five minutes i got everything packed on the bike i sat down on the bike and it started raining oh. that's how close we came <laughs> to have raining have it rain on my laptop which would not have been a good thing no <laughs> the last thing you guys would have seen would be like me going oh shit slam <laughs> <laughs> running <laughs> And it proceeded to rain from Window Rock all the way down to uh, uh, um, Holbrook. So that was a. Uh, I was. I had a little bit of rain here and there throughout the trip, but I. I told my wife, "There's no way I'm going to go up here up in thunderstorm season and not yeah. have rain." So I didn't have rain, and then I had two days of it. So just like it just packed it in. To just two days so that's that's not bad that's worth the trade-off yeah for the rest of the good days yeah 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 and, and i don't mind riding in the rain um i the only thing is i have a windshield on the bike and i have a visor right and mm -hmm. the water drop that's just that you know you're doing this all the time because you i'm like well this is safe yeah. riding a motorcycle with one down, hand down i-40 and i can't see this is <laughs> that what could go wrong you know you just got to get like a little windshield yeah, wiper that goes I, on the I'm top like, of your wait, helmet. They don't and then... make a windshield wiper for your motorcycle. That's insane. All right. Well, thanks, there's your mark. Yeah. I'm parked and I have a picture. Sure, right. Go ahead. Sure. Okay. It's on my screen. You've got to share your screen. Go it's on my phone screen. I think you can share that, right? Oh, okay. How do I share it? So, okay. Look at your, uh, oh, your little tools there and it should say share screen. Okay. Wait, I have to find us again. Here we are. Share screen. It says Don. Go to a different window. Different window. Different window. Uh-oh. God, I'm just such a, <laughs> sounds like I'm a techie mess here. No, nope. I don't even see your picture. I don't know where you went. I see I'm, me. I'm, yeah, I'm not sharing anything. Oh, okay. I, yeah, I can't. If I'm sharing something, you can't share. So I'm, I'm clear. Oh, okay. So I don't see. Usually there's a thing that there's instructions on the bottom, but I don't see them. Leave, record, Zoom, more. Oh, let's look at more. Oh, no. Hold on. Okay, I guess I'm not, I guess I'm not sharing today. <laughs> Hold on. I'm, not I'm, used to doing I'm Googling it. I'm Googling it. Googling um, what? Where's my share button? Yeah. Because, yeah, usually, usually you guys, there's faces. Okay, like it says click share. But I don't see a share button. Where's the share button? Okay. If you are on your phone, you yeah. see your little icon for microphone and video. Right in the middle, there's a green button no. that should say share, share oh. uh, content. Right in the middle, under the little okay. face. Okay, I went back, I'm back at the meet. So if I go to this button, oh, maybe this button is the meetings, contact settings, schedule back Do to not meeting. go in, it, it should be, should it be should be little, right in the bottom. It should have some a little icons green, in screen. Yeah, just a little, it's showing green. here a little green box. At the bottom, you'll have a microphone, video, and then a little green box. Yeah. Okay. You're on the iPhone, yes? No, I'm on an Android. 
saying it's the same. Wait, I have it. Oh, I have it. I have it. I got it. Uh, there you it is. I don't know what I did. Share. Oh, now it's going to ask me screen. Okay, share screen. Start capturing. Start now. Okay, now I'm going right. to go find it. Now I'm going to go find you the got it. There it is. You got there it. it. There, there you go. go. There you go. <laughs> we all learned something today. <laughs> oh. Yes. Um, this is in Ross Creek Cedars, and it's in uh, northern western Montana um, on Highway 56 Bull River. There's a place called Ross Creek Cedars, and there are these very old cedars um, uh, that have not been cut for years. And um, it's hard to take a picture showing how big they really are. So this lady and her husband were there <coughs> and I said, oh, can I take a picture while you're standing there? So Yeah, scale, baby. You know, what's really yeah. interesting is that it looks like a really big tree with a small tree in front. But when you look at her and you put her up next to the quote, small tree in front, it's still a big tree. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's what would be a big tree to most of us. Yeah. And um, uh, this is with my Nikon D700 and in in its monochrome setting. And I've done almost nothing to this. I just love how my camera shoots monochrome. It actually does a really nice job, so. And of course, a forest like this is hard because it's dark, it's bright. Mm -hmm. <laughs> are, so you, um, I could... are you up in Montana, Montana right now? No, I'm in Portland actually waiting to go trade with a colleague. We're gonna work on each other, so. <laughs> Because um, I'm looking at the weather map right now. Yep. Montana needs rain. Yep. Let me tell you, lady, it got it. Oh, yeah. I heard they got like a Western, almost an inch or something the other day. Western Montana has been green for three days now on the radar map. Oh. It just moves in, moves over to North Dakota, and then comes in again in waves. Um, oh, Yellowstone. Wow has been drenched all of uh, all of western montana not you know eastern montana not so much but western montana right now western montana all of from billings east i'm saying west i mean east billings east is just green wow green. and we can't get it we can't get a drop out in portland and oregon or california or washington where we're all just burning up so yep it looks like a little is coming down <laughs> Right now, you've got some storms coming in. To, ooh, there we got some uh, in uh, eastern Oregon and central Washington's getting a little bit of rain. Um, oh, good. Just good. above above Seattle and inland, about probably uh, 150 miles. Halfway between Seattle oh. and Spokane is where the rain's coming in. So oh, cool. the movement's good. This is good. You're getting movement that's that's bringing uh, storms down. Uh, yes, we we did. Cooler, so we've, we've had cooler cool. weather and clouds for a couple of days, so that's encouraging. So this picture, though, real quick, this picture. So when my son was young, he's 42, so probably 39, 30, 40 years ago, a friend and I uh, took a trip and we went through and went to Ross Creek Cedars and I took pictures with black and white Triax. So um, I've gone through the Ross Creek Cedars twice since, and each time I've shot them in black and white in honor of the very first time when I took film, black and white film. Nice. Mm -hmm. Cool. Hey, thanks for letting me show my picture. I'll let you guys get back to it. Well, actually, we're going to close it down. It's been mm. great, guys. Yeah, absolutely. Super cool. Fun. Yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah. Uh, thanks, everybody, for coming out. Uh, very successful show and uh, bringing something to share. That's very cool. Mm -hmm. And we all got to share. And I think that's really cool. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. I need the know. tips. <laughs> yep. All right, everyone. Uh, thank okay. You. Thanks again. And we will see you uh, next time. Thanks, Sid. Absolutely. Everybody be safe. Have a good week. Thanks. Bye. Alrighty. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye, everybody.